digital camcorder effects can go a long way in making your video feel just a little bit more spooky or nostalgic. More spooky in the case of digital camcorders in my opinion. Today I'm going to show you how to replicate a digital camcorder effect in DaVinci Resolve 18.6. Full disclosure, these effects are not intended to accurately recreate a real digital camcorder. For that, you would use a real digital camcorder. This is intended to give the idea of one, and the effects I give are exaggerated. You can likely turn down a lot of these settings to get a more realistic effect. First, I'll begin by dragging onto the timeline the clip we'll be applying our effects to. At this point, if you know Fusion well, you can continue in Fusion and follow along. If not, we'll just do it in the timeline since in my case, when I tried it in Fusion, it lagged. I'm not sure why. Now, these first two additions are completely optional, but they just add a little bit to the kind of spooky vibe and give light something to catch. I'm just adding an image I found online to add a fractured glass effect. I'll try to include this and anything else I use in the description, but you can probably find other stuff. I'm going to change our composite type to color dodge, and that'll allow us to see the image underneath. And same with this lens dearth effect overlay. This is a good start, but it's not genuine to a real camcorder. You can see that the shattered glass effect here is completely sharp. When a camcorder focuses on a distant object, close things like the effects on the lens will blur out. So we'll take Gaussian Blur and put that on our Fractured Glass effect. But it is way too strong in this case, so we're going to change the 0.23 so you can still see it, but it's just blurred a little bit. Next, we're going to add our first adjustment clip. So we can add a dent effect to kind of replicate the look of how a lens distorts. But we're going to set it to Type 2, a size 0.999. And then our strength to 0 0.35. We're going to also add an effect called box blur. And this is so that the image isn't so sharp. Because a real camcorder lens, usually of that error, aren't perfect. So there's going to be a little bit of blur. But this is way too strong. So we're going to change it to something closer to 0 0.12. And as you can see, that gives us a little bit of a uh, lens distortion and a tiny bit of blur. And then so we can't see those curved edges of the image, we're going to add something to crop the image a little bit and to make the aspect ratio closer to something you might see on a real camcorder of that era. Next, we're going to add another adjustment clip and find an effect called prism blur to kind of give us chromatic aberration. Now, realistically, I'd put that down here, but I kind of like what it does to the edges of the image, so we're adding it here. Artistic choices. But we have a whole bunch of settings to change, starting with the blur strength. I'm going to change to 0.045. Aberration distance, we're going to turn down to 0.20. Aberration strength to 0.5. And vignette strength up to 0. 149 then vinegar sharpness down to 2.33 this is a good place to get a nice effect that lenses tend to cause and blend down to 0 0.868 then we're going to add an effect called light rays to give us kind of a haziness to the image but we're going to turn down source threshold to 0 0.147 our length all the way down to 0.01, soften to 0.1, and brightness to 0.18. We're going to turn bright region recovery up to 0.767, and global blend down to 036 and there you go, you can kind of see what that light ray effect kind of does to the image. Next, we're going to add fast noise so that the image isn't so uniform. Not much to change here, we'll just change blend to 0 0.15. Oh, almost forgot, we're also going to change composite type to darker color. Mm. Lastly, for this uh, adjustment clip, we're going to add an effect called waviness. 
so the image isn't so static, but by default, it's this water wavy effect, which isn't what I'm going for. So we're gonna change the scale down to 19, strength to 0 0.2, and then speed all the way up to one. And as you can see, now the image is less static just by a little bit and less uniform in terms of color. Next, I'm gonna overlay a film grain video and I'm gonna change this to linear light and then opacity to 50. And that adds a little bit of film grain to our image, but I'm not going for a film camera. I'm going for a digital camera. So we're gonna have to add another adjustment clip. To this, we're gonna start by adding a color compressor to decrease the dynamic range. So we're gonna start by changing compress hue to 0.1, compress saturation to make it last saturated to 0.1, and compress luminance to increase the black level up to 0.04. We're gonna also add an effect called JPEG damage, and this is gonna make our film grain look like digital noise. For this, I like the quality of 26, a resolution of 2 to make it look a little more blocky, an aspect ratio I'm gonna leave alone, frequency scale I'll leave alone, a uh, global blend here I like at 0.65. Now this is our effect basically done, but there are a few little tweaks I like to make to the edit to really sell the effect. And the first one has to do with the motion blur. Basically, I like to duplicate the clip. In this case, it's just an image, but normally, of course, you need a video. And I'll layer it. I'll half its opacity, zoom in like all the way, and stutter it over by one frame. And this will kind of create extra motion blur and a kind of stuttery effect. Now in this case, I'll do it once since it's a 30 FPS video, but you can add more layers to this to kind of make it more dramatic or just if you have a higher frame rate. Second has to do with audio. First, I like to add some type of coil whine because the mic is usually in the camera body and there might be a little bit of whine from that. So I'll, I'll take that and then I'll decrease the volume in our case. Then, I like to also add some wind noises if it's, say, an outdoor scene. And this shouldn't be, like, clean, like, wind noises you'd find in most thug websites. This should be, like, bad quality wind noise. Kind of being picked up in a mic that doesn't have any pop filter on it. That type of sound. So I have some audio here. And this is kind of what it would sound like. And as you can see, that already helped a lot, but there is one little extra thing I like to do to any other audio we add, such as voice clips. In this case, I'll demonstrate it with our uh, static sound effect, but obviously you wouldn't do it here. I would turn on the equalizer, turn off band 2, turn on band 1, turn on band 4. I'll bring this over to like, about there. Bring this, like up here. And what that'll do is it'll cut off the high and low frequencies and kind of compress your audio a lot so that it's much lower quality. It kind of sounds like it's on a cheap camcorder mic. And I'm gonna leave it at that. That is our effect finished. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope to see you all in the next video or stream. Leave a comment down below if you have any comments or suggestions or need any help. And bye!